You know how you go to an auto parts store and they want to know the make, year, model, and all the drivetrain specifications of your car just to buy a screwdriver? Well, try going to an alignment shop and telling them that you have a 1950 Jaguar with 1976 Ford Mustang front suspension and Tesla Model 3 rear suspension. I own five cars and only one of them does not have modified suspension. The 4Runner is the least of the modifications, but the S600, the Viper, the Jag, and of course the Land Speed car all have pretty much fully custom suspension. A clever mechanic could probably figure out which screws to turn to change camber, caster, and toe, but there's no specifications for these parameters except for what I randomly decide on a delirious late drunken night after working on the car for 16 hours. In any case, I would like to be able to do an alignment myself, and I have several times using the string method, but that's not super accurate and it's kind of a pain. But I have a 3D scanner, and theoretically I should be able to scan the wheels and find out exactly what my toe, camber, and caster are. I should also be able to tell if the rear axle is lined up with the frame, which is a thing I haven't done on the Viper yet, or the race car. Also, I have a new scanner. This is the Creality Raptor. This is the new competitor to the Einstar, which is my current favorite scanner. So I'm going to scan the Viper with both of these and measure the alignment in CAD. Then I'm going to take the Viper to an actual alignment shop and have them measure it with their professional equipment. And then we will see if you can do your own alignment using just a 3D scanner. So there have been some significant news stories over the last few weeks with a lot of coverage, but the more news outlets report on these stories, somehow the harder it is to know what's actually going on. Ground News gathers news from these outlets, over 50,000 news sources every day, and distills it down in a way that makes it much easier to get the actual story. Here's a story about how Google bailed on its plans to remove cookies from Chrome. It has 81 total sources, with a balanced 27% coming from the left and 27% from the right. Most of the sources are media conglomerates, but it does have 19% independent sources. Ground News even makes it easy to compare headlines to see how that bias can affect framing. For example, this left-leaning headline uses charged language, saying that Google went back on its promise to consumers, while this right-leaning headline mentions that it scrapped the plan after advertiser uproar. If you really want to see the difference between left and right reporting, check out Blindspot. This will help you break out of your echo chamber by showing you stories disproportionately reported by one side. I don't like reading the news, so it may seem a little weird that I have this sponsor, but I like ground news because they cut through the noise. I can skip past the biased reporting that makes reading the news so frustrating. You can't get this type of news analysis anywhere else. So go to ground.news slash superfastmat to subscribe through my link for 40% off unlimited access with their Vantage plan, the same plan I use. By subscribing, you are directly supporting an independent platform on a mission to restore facts, transparency, and trust in the news. There is no shortage of do-it-yourself alignment tools. A lot of these bolt to the hubs, which is not a good idea since this means the car has to be jacked up and the suspension in full droop instead of how it is normally sitting on the ground. Camber is pretty easy. You get something to datum off the rim of the wheel and measure the angle of that. This is, of course, only as accurate as the thing that mounts to the wheel, which for around 100 bucks is probably not great. Probably more accurate to buy a good digital angle finder and then put a straight edge up against the wheel, which is a thing that I did. I'm going to do this using my absolute favorite thing to use for everything, which is, of course, crap I already have lying around. Specifically, a 3D scanner. I already told you that you should have one of these in your toolbox, so I assume that you all do. Alignment shops use expensive equipment that attaches to the wheels, and they measure that equipment with lights and reflectors. They're kind of already using 3D scanners. There's just an intermediate structure that attaches to the wheel, and they get immediate feedback. So, in theory, if our scanners are accurate, they should be at least as good as the professional equipment. Actually, if they're half as good as all the numbers that these companies advertise for their scanners, it should be better. If you're doing a garage alignment, you might want to have something under the tires that allows them to rotate as you adjust the suspension. Actually, you need it not only to rotate, but also to slide as well, since your car usually gains width at the tires when you lower it down from a jack. The Viper does this a lot. Fortunately, you can accomplish both rotating and translating with a couple of sheets of metal or plastic. You just slather some grease between them like a petroleum-based sandwich. The bottom plates sit on the floor and the top plate moves around with the tire. I made these, but then I remembered I don't actually need them. They come in handy when you're adjusting your alignment while it's on the ground and you can get instant feedback from an alignment computer, but I don't have instant feedback. This is the main flaw of the 3D scan alignment. You have to scan the car and then pull it into CAD, then check your toe and camber, and then go back and adjust it and scan it again. Since I know the geometry of the suspension and I know the thread pitch of the rod ends, I should be able to calculate how many turns I need to make to get the correct adjustment once I have the accurate measurement. Then I can just roll the car back and forth a couple of times to let the tires reset and measure again to double check that I did everything right. 
So let's give it a shot. My go-to scanner these days is the Einstar. This thing has been great. Pretty easy to use and the results are accurate and repeatable. It does lack a little bit in fine detail. I tried to get the bolt pattern from the back of the Viper engine and it was a decent scan but not good enough to make an adapter plate. I also tried with my Revo Point Morocco which was terrible at this. This was partly due to the fact that I was scanning with the engine in the car, but either way, it's not great at holes and studs. I believe you need a different kind of scanner for this, something with lasers. The other issue I had with this scanner is that it will sometimes lose track of its location and throw garbage data on top of your good scan, but Einstar added a rewind feature in the software that fixes this. In fact, the software has improved a lot since it came out, helping tracking and adding features, and they've added a Mac version, which is nice for me since my Mac is faster and smaller and doesn't require two giant power adapters to use at full power. Going up against the Einstar is the relatively new Creality Raptor. This is similar in a lot of ways to the Einstar with one added feature. It has blue laser scanning. Remember how I said you need lasers for accurate holes and small details? Well, here are your lasers. It also has near-infrared scanning, or NIR, which is kind of the same way the Einstar does it. NIR is great because it can pick up on geometry, so you just need something other than a flat surface for the scanner to work. The blue laser, however, requires targets, and I hate targets. You always have to use so many of them, they're a pain to stick down and peel up, and they cost money. I paid full price for the Einstar, but Creality did send me their scanner for free and specifically wanted me to compare it to the Einstar. I did a test run on both of these scanners using my land speed car. I need to redesign a firewall that matches up with my new engine cover, so I have to scan with the engine cover off and then on again. Straight away, the Einstar does exactly what I need it to, picking up on all the pertinent geometry. The engine cover is the sort of shape that all 3D scanners hate. It is a gently curved surface without any fine detail. As soon as the scanner loses sight of the geometry below the cover, it loses its place. This is easily fixed with my favorite way of keeping track, wadding up tape. Just wad up some tape and stick it to the surface in a few different places. Now you have complex geometry, and that works great. The Creality Raptor was not doing so good. Even without the engine cover, it was running much slower and was much more likely to lose its place. It did get the scan, but it took about twice as much time. I tried with the blue laser, and it did get the surface after sticking on several targets. It would have been faster and better with more targets, but I don't want to stick on targets for the next 20 minutes just to spend an hour taking them off. This is probably a good feature for smaller objects than this. Whatever, let's do an alignment. I recently updated the steering arms on my Viper, mostly because I trashed the last ones doing sweet jumps in the desert. Because of this, the alignment is wrong. My toe is bad, and I only ever check the camber with a straight edge and an angle finder, so I don't know how good that is. Also, I'm pretty sure my rear axle is shifted off to one side. To check this, I'm going to scan all four wheels. The Einstar does this really well, especially if you know how it likes to scan, which is lots of complex geometry. Fortunately, I don't have these side covers on the exhaust, so there's lots of details in there to keep the tracking. The Einstar software for Mac is still in beta, and it mostly works great, except I kept getting this error, so I switched to Windows where everything worked fine. The Einstar software has a decent set of features. It gives you a lot of sliders and switches to clean up your mesh and keep it reasonably sized. It also has the ability to use geometry to align your scan to a coordinate system, which is really nice. The Creality software is less user-friendly. It only has a few selections for scan quality and size. It has settings for bodies, faces, and normal. I could only get it to scan the car using body, which I thought was for people bodies, but maybe not. There's supposed to be a checkbox for fast scanning here, but it's not there. The translations are not great. You get the impression the software was removed from the oven well before it was done cooking. Scanners usually have problems with repeating patterns like tires or wheels, but the sidewall branding on these Falcon Wild Peak tires is big enough that both of the scanners had no problem tracking it around. So, shout out to Falcon. I'm sure this is exactly why they put the raised letters on their tires. Creality has limited setup settings. I'm scanning something large, but if you select large, it seems to ignore smaller details and lose its tracking a lot more. So I selected medium and then scanned something large. I also had to switch to Windows on this scanner. Creality for Mac never finished the scan. It would get some percentage in and then the screen would just go white. I thought it might have something to do with the fact that I got this error and just blasted right past it, but I did try two more times without the error and got the same thing. Frustrating. Almost as frustrating as my terrible shop stool. Send me your quality rolling stool recommendations. I am sick of this thing. Anyway, I also scanned my land speed car to check the alignment there. This is a lot better use case for me, since I definitely can't get this scanned at a normal auto shop. Also, it's a lot narrower, so scanning is way easier. I made these alignment plates to make this easier, but it's still not super accurate, mostly because they're kind of flimsy. 
I did the tape wads on the wheels. The Einstar doesn't need this, but it does scan a lot faster with them. The tires don't have the distinctive sidewall markings that the Viper tires have. The Creality Raptor definitely needed the tape, and you still have to be super slow with the scanning on the wheels. With the scans in the computer, we can check to see if they agree with each other. All we need to do is create a plane on the frame and then a plane on each one of the wheels. In Fusion, you import your mesh and then right click on it and go to direct edit and then you can add a plane using three points. It looks like there's a ton of noise on these wheels and you can use software like MeshLab to smooth it out, but I found it didn't make much of a difference in the actual geometry, as long as you pick three points that are far away from each other. I did do the smoothing on the land speed car wheels and it didn't make much of a difference. Interesting to see that the wheels are dished a little bit, I'm guessing because of the welding around the perimeter. You can tell with a straight edge in the real world that this is true. Once you have the planes, just sketch a vertical line and a horizontal line starting at the wheel center. I also added a line on the axis of the steering. Then you can measure your toe and camber from those lines. I have a bit of toe on the race car, but I also have some camber, and that's annoying because that's going to be a lot harder to change. This requires a sawzall and a welder. The Viper shows a total front toe of 1.67 degrees and a total front camber of negative 1.26 degrees. The rear is 0.3 toe and a camber of 0.67 degrees. Not great, but not the worst. Just to double check, I drew new planes and measured three times, and they were all within about 5% of each other. As for the Creality Raptor, I gave up trying to get all four wheels after several tries, but it is clear just by looking at it that it's not accurate. The whole scan seems to be stretched out like a banana. Looking at it from the front, the rear tire seems to be sticking way out and cambered way in, which it obviously isn't. Measuring toe, it has the same number at about 1.7 degrees, but it's saying toe in, not toe out, which you can visually see is not correct. Interestingly, camber is the exact same as the Einstar, coming in at negative 1.3 degrees. So, let's take it to an alignment shop to see what it actually is. Alignment shops use these reflective plates mounted to a structure that clamps onto the wheel. These things up here, I believe, are infrared lights and sensors that measure the distance to the different parts of the reflective plate, probably using time of flight, or the time it takes the light to get from the emitter, bounce off the reflectors, and back to the sensor. It's pretty cool, they can just turn the wheel and get immediate updates. Anyway, these are the measurements. The rear end looks good, camber looks good, front end is towed out by 1.33 degrees, which is bad. Our scan said 1.66 degrees of tow out. To be clear, these numbers here are from the Einstar. The Creality Raptor was way off, so far off that the numbers don't even get to be on the board. They have to sit alongside it. The Einstar was much closer, with the biggest difference being about a third of a degree in front tow, which is not excellent. The other measurements were closer, probably being within a reasonable error depending on your use case. I'm guessing the difference is just a stack up of errors from scanning one side of the car to the other, although it is interesting that the rear is a bit closer to the real numbers considering the scan had way more time to stack up errors. In any case, I believe the land speed car will be more accurate since the wheels are so close together. The scanner doesn't have to chain together a long scan of errors from one side to the other, and this is verified by the fact that both scanners picked up similar numbers on the race car, getting almost exactly the same camber. So, can you do an alignment on your car using a 3D scanner? Kind of, if it's a good scanner. You can get pretty close. And pretty close is sometimes good enough. Sometimes not good enough. It depends on what you're doing. Creality specifically wanted me to compare this Raptor scanner to the Einstar, so here goes. It's not as good at the kind of things that I do. The Einstar scans really well, it keeps tracking, it aligns really well, and it gets enough detail. The Raptor also does these, but only if you use targets. With the blue laser, targets are required, but the near-infrared scanner also scans a lot better with targets. When using the NIR without targets, it doesn't keep tracking as well, doesn't align as well, and the detail is not as good. And this could all just be software, and the software is pretty bad. This is kind of two scanners in one, and the blue laser scanner gets much better detail and accuracy. It is impressive in a relatively inexpensive scanner. Einstar's blue laser scanner is $8,000. The Einstar has done everything I need it to except one thing, and that is to get a good scan of the rear of the Viper engine. I wanted this scan in case I wanted to switch to a ZF8 speed in the future, but the accuracy just wasn't there. The blue laser from Creality would probably have done it. I'm not going to pull the transmission to find out, but if someone has a second generation Viper engine sitting around in Southern California, let me know. I talked to David over at Making for Motorsport about this. He has a video where he goes into the detailed scans with the blue laser, and its accuracy is really good. Also, its ability to get holes, which are always a challenge for scanners. If you're considering either of these scanners, you should watch his videos on them, which I will link below. Like I said, this is kind of two scanners in one, and one of them is excellent, but I mostly do the other kind, the kind that doesn't need targets. I want to walk into the garage, wave my hand around, and have a 3D model, and the Einstar is really good at doing that. 
It's better than the Creality at the kind of things that I do most of the time. You could probably get an excellent alignment scan with the blue laser as long as you coated your garage floor in thousands of targets. If you mostly need smaller, accurate scans and occasionally larger stuff like car suspension, I'd go with the Raptor. Especially if you have the patience to apply lots of little reflective dots. It is more accurate, but a lot slower. If Creality can clean up the software and get the near-infrared tracking as good as the Einstar, it would be the scanner to get. But for now, this is going to be the scanner that I reach for most of the time. Thanks for watching.